standby for manual transmission in three, two, one. Greetings, mercenaries, mech warriors, and the merely curious. Manus Dextra here with episode 3 of my complete walkthrough for Mech Warrior 5. In the last episode, we continued the story and did two drops. The first was a high reward quest called Armed Robbery. Then we did a Scorched Earth mission to finish the episode. I also provided tips and advice on topics like industrial hubs, hiring pilots, and setting up mechs for AI control. So if you're new to the game and you're struggling, you might want to start at the beginning of the series. In this episode, I'll continue giving tips and advice. We're currently up to tip number 14 in our running tally for the series. And in this episode, we'll cover things like cantina missions and talk a bit more about fire groups and setting up mechs for AI control. We'll also put our new hero mech to the test as we do walkthroughs for the next high reward quest line along with two bonus drops. This is going to be another long one, so feel free to check the description for timestamps to specific points of interest. And while you're there, don't forget to do these things too. It only takes a second, but it really helps the channel, and it lets me know you want more big, stompy robot content. Now, saddle up, buttercups, and let's get started. In the last episode, we just managed to make it to rep level 4. This is enough for us to get a follow-up transmission from Commander Markson saying that he's impressed with our work and he's put the word out to the local fixers. These are basically mission brokers who handle contracts that are too small for the MRB to mess with. You can pause this and read the whole message if you want, but the important bit is in the last paragraph. Get them what they need and they'll give you upgrade blueprints and rare tech to augment your mechs with. If there's a cantina available in the system, you'll see this symbol with the green circles on the star map and or on your home screen. If you click on the operations tab, you'll get a bit more information, including your progress with each type of mission. These missions follow a linear progression, so doing more missions of a specific type will unlock more and better upgrades and payouts as you go. And just to be clear, none of these upgrades are game-changing, but they aren't bad either. And there's really no downside to taking these missions on, so you might as well load up on them when you can. As it turns out, we already have inventory to complete the first Mech Collector mission since we just salvaged an Irby on our last drop. Which brings us to tip number 14 for the series. So if you don't need to sell them for cash, save your unwanted mechs in cold storage and use them to complete mech collector missions. And don't bother to repair them either. If we sold this Irby at market, we'd only get about 350,000 sea bills for it. But turning it in on a cantina mission will snag us nearly a million sea bills, plus a nice high tier weapon in addition to an upgrade blueprint. That's fantastic for a cord out Irby. So yeah, if you have a mech that's in bad shape, saving it for a cantina mission will usually be the best way to dispose of it. Now let's go back and check out that hero mech we discovered last episode. This mech is faster and carries more armor than your standard commando, and it comes stuffed with double heat sinks to support its four medium lasers. If we sell the Locust, we'll have just enough money to buy it, refit it, and pay for jump ship fees so we can get back to work.
The refit for this one is pretty simple. As usual, we'll start by maxing out the armor. Then we'll pull the medium lasers and double heat sinks. I mostly want this mech for objective raids, beachhead and demolition missions, situations where you need to cross the map quickly and take out specific targets and or structures. This commando's extra speed and armor will be great for that, but will be better off armed with flamers. So we'll go with three tier two flamers. These are very short range, but they put out massive DPS and they can be very effective against structures and mechs. We'll also mount one small laser for air defense. So now that we've spent all our money, we need to get back to work. We have a uh, Cantina treasure hunt mission for Inferno's Wake, so we might as well look for contracts there. Patton's Brug has two contracts against House Corita, so that seems as good a choice as any. By the time we get there, we are really short on cash. So we'll go for the mission with the highest C-bill payout, and we'll put all our extra negotiation points into more cash. Usually, I would go for salvage, but we need cash to cover operating expenses right now. After this drop, we can go back to farming salvaged mechs and equipment. We're reading heavy weather warnings out there, Commander. Expect limited visibility and sensor malfunctions on this mission. Before we drop, let's take a minute to look at mech builds and talk about setting fire groups for AI mechs. So, the AI just cycles through weapon groups one at a time. If they're in range and firing that weapon group won't overheat the mech, they fire. If not, they move on to the next group, make the same checks, decide to fire or not, rinse, and repeat. So, the trick to keeping your mechs firing is to give them similarly ranged weapons and keep them in small groups. For example, you might give a mech medium lasers and LRMs, or you could give it SRMs and medium lasers, since there's a range overlap in either case. But you would not want to give an AI mech SRMs and LRMs, since those weapons don't really have overlapping ranges and won't work well together under AI control. Likewise, if you have a mech armed with lots of weapons of the same type, you'll still need to break them up into multiple groups. Otherwise, they'll build up too much heat over time, and your mech just won't fire at all until it cools down. For example, on my Jenners and Javelins, I split the medium lasers into two groups of two, and this allows them to sustain fire for much longer without running into heat issues. Bigger guns and missile packs with larger heat loads will also need to be on their own fire groups as well, since AI pilots don't use chain fire effectively. So let's go ahead and make this tip number 15. An easy way to tell if your setup is working is by looking at the scoreboard after each mission. If you have a mech that's consistently putting out less damage than the rest, Look at weapon groups and heat management first. Make sure you have weapons with compatible ranges in small groups with plenty of heat sinks and you should do fine. And just to be clear, only group similar weapons together. Medium lasers with medium lasers, SRMs with SRMs, etc. Mixed weapon types in the same group will lead to targeting problems. Our targets have given our employer nothing but problems. We have been hired as a solution. Find them and put them down for good. We'll be on standby to evac you once the job is done. Arm lock. Night vision. Show map. Close map. If you find 
find the acquisition, just walk up to it in order to pick it up. That's close enough. Ready Plane to start cargo. pickup operation. Always good to restock on ammo. Target signed. All units, weapons free. Spider. Sensor yeah, it's on my tango. We're on it, boss. So this is not the type of mission I wanted this mech for, but as previously mentioned, we are very short on cash at the moment, and this is all we have to work with. It'll be interesting to see how a 25-ton Raider Brawler holds up doing general combat. For this mission, we have multiple targets and several locations to check, so I'll need to pace myself. Tango. Target received. Engaging. I'm really missing jump jets right now. I started getting a bit too aggressive with the spider. I should have stayed back and let the lance finish him. Form on me. Following your footsteps, Commander. So tip number 16, keep an eye on your lance in the mini-map. If you see them start to spread out too much, slow down and get them back in formation. Our last three locations are pretty close together, and once the alert goes Hurry up, up we'll be swarmed with defenders. So we need everyone in range and firing when we make contact. I'm showing nothing on scopes that can be identified as our targets. We'll have to move on to the next nav point. Target acquired. Target acknowledged. 
For the second target, I have the Lance and Gage. Will I close and flank? This works pretty well, but I should be doing a better job at evading fire. Identification on secondaries. Lance, on my Django. Target shared, engaging. Since armor's already running thin from the first two marks, I'm hanging back a bit before slipping in from behind. Somehow I managed to cook that guy before he cores me out. So that drop went well, and now that we have some cash to cover expenses, we can afford to take some time and patch up before the next job. We'll 
we'll stay in the system and do the battlefield contract for House Davian. I'd like to do the drop that includes the Cantina mission, but uh, that contract is against House Davian, and I want to stay on their good side right now. And now that we have a bit of cash, we'll go back to loading up on salvage points as much as possible and hope we get the chance to claim some new mechs. Battlefield and Warzone missions are great for earning extra sea bills and salvage since you will have a minimum number of enemies to defeat and any extra kills will result in bonus pay and more potential salvage. Unfortunately for us, we only have 11 points of salvage for this contract, so we probably won't spend too much time running up the score on this one. Mind the weather, Commander. It'll compromise your visibility. if your mix return to the hangar looking like Swiss cheese. Good luck. They have detected your presence, Commander. I'm seeing multiple tangos on Scorb converging on your current position. Show map. Close map. Pass out nearby. Acquired. Additional bogies heading along a trajectory that intersects with your position. Lance on my tango. Wilco, focusing fire. on my tango.
So my Django. Somebody get that. Continuing to converge on your location. Stay frosty, Commander. Man, it's on my tango. Negative on that target order. That's on my tango. We're on it, Commander.
target acquired. Enemy reinforcements spotted in the area. They look like they're heading your way. Yeah, it's up my tango. Target. Sorry, Commander, I can't attack it. Target, dis Target is down. Target destroyed. Additional bogies setting an intercept course on your position. Contact Battle Mech. New target, Shadowhawk. Target acquired. Lance on my tango. I guess we'll go ahead and clean the spider. And a check of the scoreboard reveals that uh, everybody seems to be pulling their weight. And since repairs are so minor, we'll just go ahead and do them in the conflict zone and keep on working. So, uh... Cadisville, or however you say that, has another high reward questline on offer, not to mention Cantina missions and a black market, so uh, we'll check that out next. The available jobs at the local cantina are all just equipment collector missions. The rewards aren't great, but these are easy to do, so we'll take them. Since there's also a black market in the system, we might as well check that out and see if they have anything on our newly acquired shopping list. And that brings us to tip number 17 for the series. So if you're looking for more unusual technology like chemical lasers, rifles, superchargers, etc., you're a lot more likely to find that stuff in a black market as opposed to a regular equipment market. For our next high value quest line, we actually have a choice of two. It seems our benefactor, Mr. Spears, has become just another victim of the ambient morality, and he wants us to raid a civilian settlement for supplies. You know, taking stuff from bandits and other mercs is one thing, stealing from farmers is something else, and we aren't going to do that. Instead, we're going to take the farmer's contract and defend their settlement from, presumably, whoever Spears does hire. So choices like this are mostly there for roleplay purposes, so don't sweat them too much. Heads up, Commander. 
Weather conditions in the area will restrict visibility. All right. We're going to get to the agricultural complex and hold off the vandals until their forces deplete. I know it doesn't look like we'll be protecting much, but this is all these farmers have. Hostile forces just crossed the perimeter, Commander. They're heading your way. Show map. Close Tangers map. Tangers in sensor range. Target acquired. Additional hostiles have been dispatched. They're heading your way. This drop is just a simple defense scenario and we've got 14 attackers to deal with. The tactics for this one are simple. Call targets for the lance and use the commando's speed to intercept targets and take them out before they're in range of the settlement. Lance on my tango. Focusing on issue target. Enemy forces closing in fast. is pulling in more hostiles from the surrounding area. New target, assassin. Target acquired. New target, panther. Target acquired. Yeah, it's on my tango. We're on it, Commander. Supplies complex has just been destroyed. Is anything there salvageable? No more 
signs of enemy forces. Good job, Commander. It feels nice to stand up for the little guy. That worked out pretty well. We managed to pick up another 3 million sea bills worth of salvage, including another Jenner. We'll be fixing that one up and keeping it for a while. And we did it all with minimal damage, so we'll just repair in the field and get ready for the next drop. In the meantime, it looks like Rihanna has another update for us. New contract just came in, Commander. But before I get to that, I've been digging for more information on the mercenary group that came after us. Black Inferno are a very nasty piece of work. Not that we didn't already know that. By every account, they operate without regard to civilian rights and protection, raiding and pillaging at will. More like pirates than mercenaries. They're also extremely evasive. I see them pop up on the mercenary review board's records from time to time, but not with enough frequency to justify their size, wealth, or sheer power. It also makes tracking their movements extremely difficult. I'll keep searching and see what more I can find. Spears said he'll do the same. Good. I want... We all want our pound of flesh from these bastards. So, what about this new contract? Yeah, could be interesting. Seems a group of indentured employees, part of the Apex Mining Syndicate, are being taken advantage of and are suffering under horrendous working conditions. In an attempt to force the Syndicate to the bargaining table, the workers want us to inflict some serious damage on two of the Syndicate's more critical mining installations. They believe the only language these people understand is the almighty Seabill. It's hard to argue with that logic. Sounds like a noble cause. Maybe, but they're ready and willing to pay for our services, and we could use some more sea bills ourselves. I've filed the mission briefing already. You just need to sign off on the operation and get us where we need to go. Copy that. So this is actually our next story campaign mission, but before we get to that, we need to finish the quest line we're already on. So it seems that the farmers managed to track the raiders back to their home base, and they want us to put a more permanent stop to them. So that's what we're going to do. Travel time will let us affect repairs en route. This is your basic assassination mission, idea being that if we eliminate Commander Vogel, his vandals will disperse and stop bothering the farmers. So that's the plan. Heavy weather warning is in effect, Commander. Your visibility and sensor readings will be compromised out there. Somewhere up ahead is the leader of Vogel's Vandals. 
Knowing these raider crews, once their leader is killed, their organization will spiral into chaos. Hopefully, Show that'll map. be enough to get them to leave our employers be. Close map. Arm lock. It's on my tango. Target received. Engaging. Target acquired. If you find the acquisition, just walk up to it in order to pick it up. Target destroyed. That's Flame working. cargo. Ready to start pickup operation. Package acquired. Target acquired. New target, Hunchback. Lance, on my tango. We're on it, boss. Hostile spotted, engaging. This drop went extremely well until the end. We managed to get in, locate the target, and take him out quickly. But this triggers the appearance of another dropship deploying a fresh lance of reinforcements. And since we aren't getting paid to kill these guys, it's time to go. Unfortunately, Rihanna picks a very bad evac point straddling a ridgeline, and in the confusion, I don't notice until it's too late. Luckily, I'm still able to run around the ridge and trigger the evac before we take too much damage. Everything works out in the end as we're able to claim some really nice loot 
including a hunchback variant. So hunchbacks are slow, but they tend to carry massive amounts of firepower in the torso, making them great mechs for AI landsmates. For completing the quest line, we also get a cicada in decent shape. And now it's time to hit the nearest industrial hub to get repairs and refits going. Right now we have an unwanted cicada and a mech collector mission for a cicada. The thing is, this mech is in pretty good shape. If we sell it in the market, we'll get nearly 2 million C-bills for it. But if we turn it in for a mission reward, we'll only get about half as much. So if your mech is in good repair, it's usually a bad idea to turn it in on one of these missions unless you really want a specific reward or upgrade. This time, I'll sell the cicada at market and find another junker for the cantina mission. So I think that'll wrap it up for this episode. In the next one, we'll refit our new mechs and do the next campaign missions. But until then... You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation.